So in this video, I want to quickly review our definition of the equal tempered scale, which is their standard scale in Western music. So in order to define the frequencies for all these notes, you start with one specific frequency. This is just a convention. There's nothing particularly special about it, but we choose 440 hertz as the frequency of one of the A's, the A above middle C on our piano. And from there, we define all of the other notes by the interval of a semitone, which we take to be exactly one twelfth of an octave. And so we remember that when we speak about intervals in music, these correspond to multiplying the frequency by a certain amount. Instead of adding a certain number of hertz, what we want to do is multiply by a certain amount. And for the interval of a semitone, that amount is the number 2 to the power 1 12th, or 1.0594, etc. So going from A to B flat, then you just multiply the 440 by this number. Going from B flat to B, you multiply again by that number. And so every time you go up a semitone, you multiply by this number. And because the number is 2 to the power 1 12th, then multiplying by 12, that 12 times, it gets you exactly the frequency which is twice as high as the one you started with. And we remember that that corresponds to a whole octave. And so you might ask, well, why are we dividing that octave up into 12 parts? Why not some other number of parts? Uh, this doesn't, if you play all of the notes, <laughs> It doesn't sound particularly harmonious, but the reason is that within that 12 notes, you have all of the simplest intervals that we talked about the last time. So all of the simplest intervals in that appear in music, or at least very good approximations to those. So if I go up five semitones that corresponds to a frequency ratio of 1.335, and that's really close to the interval of four thirds, which is a perfect fourth. If I go up seven semitones, that's 1.498. That's the frequency ratio, and that's very, very close to a perfect fifth. If I go up three semitones, that's very close to a minor third. And if I go up four semitones, then that is quite close, not as close as the other ones, uh, but still quite close to a major third. So dividing up the octave into those 12 equal parts, we end up getting all of the most important intervals in music. And once, once we've done that, so the reason why we do this equal division rather than sticking with these perfect ratios of 5 over 4, 4 over 3, 3 over 2, is that we can start now on any of the notes and we'll get the, exactly the same interval. So going from C to G as the same multiple in terms of frequency as going from C sharp to G sharp. And so playing uh, triad C, E, G, it has the same uh, feeling as playing C sharp, F, G sharp. Those notes have the same relationship to one another in the two cases. So you could ask about other ways of dividing up the octave. And so if you, if you divide up the octave into other equal portions, then you just don't tend to get all of these nice intervals unless you choose a, a larger number than 12. But it's interesting to hear what it sounds like. So we could divide up the interval just into two parts. We get this simple scale. And so that's kind of menacing. That involves only the interval of the tritone and two tritones make up one octave. So that interval, historically, that was sometimes associated with evil and even rumored to be avoided by, uh, by certain composers uh, as as like bringing on evil. I'm not sure if that's true or not. 
So that would be dividing up the octave into two equal parts. Um, if we divide up the octave into three equal parts, that means that you get major third, major third, major third. Sorry. This one. Okay, so that's, that's a combination of notes that would form an augmented chord. Okay, so maybe not particularly harmonious, but often in music we want to have things that have some tension to them that, that can then resolve. So you might be familiar with this chord in the context of the following. Especially if you're Canadian. And uh, so that was that's the division of the scale into three equal parts. If we divide the scale into four equal parts, uh, that gives a, a very familiar kind of musical sound, which is the diminished sound. So that was a diminished arpeggio, or if I play all the notes at once, then you get the diminished chord. And that also is, is quite common um, as something that would, would resolve nicely. Appears a lot in various types of music. Uh, and then the final one that is easy to play or that we can play using the regular keyboard is dividing the octave up into six equal parts. And this is what's known as the whole tone scale. So it sounds like this. And so that is a very commonly used scale when introducing something like a vision or a dream sequence in, in movies. So you probably recognize that one. So of course you could also think about dividing up your octave into five equal parts or seven equal parts or more than 12 equal parts. And people have definitely explored that in the past, but you can't play the notes that you would get that way on a regular keyboard. So I won't be able to demonstrate that for you at this point. Uh, we could also think about just dividing up the octave into unequal parts and many scales work that way. So originally uh, a lot of the music did not involve the full chromatic scale and still many compositions only involve just a selection of those 12 notes. <laughs>